Good morning. I welcome you here this morning. We are so happy that you've joined us in worship, and we pray today will be a blessing for you as we celebrate the coming of Christ, the birth, baby born in Bethlehem's manger, that he's born to be our Savior and Lord. As we gather this morning, we want to dedicate our service of worship before the Lord in prayer. So I invite you to join me as we pray together. Lord, we thank you for your sovereignty and for the power of your presence that meets with us here. We thank you for the gift of your love and in Christ, the gift of peace that we have. As we gather this morning, we ask you to receive our worship. For we offer to you our hearts. We offer to you our worship. And we ask you, Lord, to pour out your powerful presence upon us through your Holy Spirit. To touch our hearts so that we will experience you in fresh and wonderful ways. Lord, it's in the saving name of your Son, who is Lord and Savior of our lives, that we dedicate our service of worship to you. And it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It is so good to see everyone here this morning. If you're a guest with us, we just want to tell you how much we do appreciate you worshiping with us. If you're a guest here for the first time, we want to make sure that you get a little bit more information about the church and the way that can happen. Before you leave this morning, when you step into the narthex, if you will just stop at the desk there, give us your name and address. Later this week, someone will stop by and they will drop off a mug for you, a mug that is filled with information that tells about the many ministries and the many opportunities that we have here in this church to serve the Lord. We do have so many ways that we serve God, we serve people in our community, and we serve one another. And we hope that you'll want to be a part of that. So we're glad that you have come here to worship with us this morning. If the attendance pads have not been passed in your row, pass them. Uh, if someone new has come into the row since they've been passed, just pass them one more time because we like to know who's here. And when you sign your name, we can tell that. But also we're able to figure out who's not able to be here. So that helps us stay in touch with all of the people in our church. And we appreciate you helping us with that. If you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, there's a, a few things that I want to cover. Uh, the first thing I want to just remind you about is this insert that came with all of your bulletins. And, and this is the insert that names the names of the people who bought poinsettias in honor or in memory of a loved one. And I just want to say on behalf of the church how much we appreciate the folks of you that have done this because it does really make a difference in the way the church looks when we have so many beautiful poinsettia plants here and it also is just such a great way to remember loved ones you may have someone that you have done this in honor of and if so you may just want to put this in the mail and send it to them just to let them know that that they were very special in your heart during this christmas time want to tell you kind of the things that are going to be happening tomorrow. We're going to, tomorrow is, of course, Christmas Eve. And so at noon, we're having a midday at the manger worship service. And immediately following that service is a soup and sandwich luncheon. And we hope that, that all of you will be here for that. Uh, we just ask that you continue just to stop by or call the church to let us know if you're planning to come because it just helps us in planning if you can do that. We hope to see all of you here. At 5 o'clock, there's going to be a contemporary worship service that will be held here in the sanctuary. And at 7 o'clock, there will be a candles and communion service. So uh, there's three different services, all bringing just a little bit different uh, way or kind of worship with them. And any one or all of them that you attend, you're going to get a special blessing from. So we hope to see you at those tomorrow as well. On Christmas Day, Tuesday, from noon until 1.30, we're going to have a potluck here at the church. And, and uh, we've had a number, a big number of people that have signed up for that. So it promises to be just a lot of fun. Remember, you're bringing a covered dish to share. The church is providing the turkey. Uh, and in the very wee event that there is terrible inclement weather, call the church office and just check, and we'll let you know if, if we've maybe had to cancel. But we, we really don't anticipate that happening. We just plan to have lots and lots of fun. I do want to tell you who your hosts are for this Christmas potluck, people who have volunteered to come and, and put everything together ahead of time and take it all apart when it's done. And that is Nancy and Dale Veach. 
Peggy Gamble, and Dee and Suzanne Reshi. So we're pleased with all of them that they're giving up a, a little bit of their holiday time to, to help make this a real special event for everyone else. I'd like to remind you that the GOAT Bank is back. Uh, they are trying to collect enough quarters so that they can buy a llama. And there's two GOAT Banks available, one in Becker Hall, and there is one also, I believe, in the hallway on the way to Becker Hall or in the Narthex. So if you find one of those banks, and it looks to me like both of them are about half full, so you can add your quarters to that so that they can get a llama in time to send off to someone that really will be able to take advantage of that. The last thing I want to remind you of is that um, FUMC, our church, is responsible for the month of January for Meals on Wheels. And uh, we've been signing people up, or I should say Daryl Botchen has been signing people up uh, to serve in taking meals to people that are shut in. And uh, he still has a few slots open. So his number's in here. Call Daryl if you're able to volunteer a little bit of your time uh, late mornings during the month of January. And I'm sure that he'll be able to find a slot for you to, to come in there and help us with that. Praise God and thank you.
As we stand together this morning, let us join in our call to worship. It's there in your bulletins and will also be on our screens this morning. Let us praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. At Christmas, Jesus came as a baby. He came to save us from our sin. Amen. God is good. And all the time. We're glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us, I want to welcome you here this morning. Um, Do you notice something different in the sanctuary? It's a whole lot brighter. (laughs) There are new lights in the fixtures. (laughs) So uh, we need to thank Ed Fisher, who's sitting, who's right there standing, and then Keith Sterwalt. They worked. They worked. You don't even know how hard they worked. On this, they built special scaffolding, and one of the fixtures even came loose, and and they have taken care of things. And so now, I can see if you're sleeping during church, and I'm very (laughs) grateful of that. Very, very grateful of that. But we are glad that you're here, and we need you to help us make sure everyone is made to feel welcome. If there's somebody that's sitting around you that you've never met before, please make an attempt to to get to them and welcome them. Will you greet those around you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Good morning. Our Advent journey is almost complete, and the Christ child will soon be here. I'm reading from Micah, 5th chapter, verses 2 through 5a. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. 
Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord God, Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. As we light the fourth candle, we are reminded of the gift of the peace that only Christ can give. Let us pray. God, our Savior, you alone are the Prince of Peace, who shall rule with justice and love. As we seek to be bearers of your peace in the world, may we find security in your grace. In your name we pray. Amen. See the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward was with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, George. Thank you, Don. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward for our time of our tithes and our offerings this morning. As we gather this morning in peace and love and joy and hope, I pray that we are all these things and experience them in our giving. As we give back to the church, as we give back to our community. Remember those you love this morning. Remember tomorrow we celebrate Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day. And give in the hope and expectation of a God who has been born on earth, Savior of the world. If you have an extra dollar in your pocket, we ask that you give that dollar, remembering so many around the world who live on so little.
Most gracious and heavenly Father, we offer these gifts to you in peace and joy and love in expectation of the miracles you would perform with the gifts we give. May they be a blessing to you and a blessing to others. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As you take your seats, if you would, 
Please make note of the insert in your bulletin this morning, the one that has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it. First, I'd like to make note that there is a white carnation here in the chancel in memory of Bill Youngman, who passed away on December 17th. We will have a memorial service here for Bill, and we ask that you uh, continue to pray for Esther and the loss of her husband and the Youngman family and the loss of a, of a father. We want to remember this morning to remember to pray for Keith Albers, who Keith has been in Mercy Hospital who had a heart attack this week. So that is not listed here. It happened after we printed. So keep Keith in your prayers. Uh, please continue to pray for Sharon Galloway. She is at Regency Northwest. It's listed incorrectly here, but she's in uh, rehabilitation at Regency Northwest. So remember her in your pray prayers. We have several people that are going through cancer treatments and struggling with cancer. Some are listed here, some are not. One that is is Liz Scarf, and she is shown as convalescing at home, but Liz is back at, North, or at Washington Regional Hospital in Fayetteville. She has undergone four days of intense cancer treatment, and we ask for you to pray for her in this time of recovering literally from the treatments and in, for, for her cancer as she has suffered and as, uh, Ewart and she and Ewart battle through this time of struggle. So please, please keep all of these people in your prayers. Remember that there are many more on our list, that there are so many that are part of our congregation that are at home who, who struggle both during the Christmas season and even beyond and before, and we want to pray for them. We want to pray for all those who worship with us through television and through our internet ministry. There are many people that we will never see, but I pray that they will be uh, blessed by what we do here, both through our giving and through our worship services. Remember this week that we'll be praying for the Institute of Music, Worship, and the Arts, the second time through our list of all the churches and, and families of faith here in our community. Pray for all those as you drive by them, but particularly this week, pray for the Music, Worship, and the Arts Institute as uh, we will be praying for them here at the church this week. If you have prayer concerns that you would like to share with us, things that you want us to pray with you about, or things that you'd like us to pray for you, that there's a prayer box in the narthex. You can fill out a card that's found in your pews. You can drop those off. If you can't find that small box, please drop them off with Brother Jamie or I, or, or with one of our ushers. I'm sure, I know that our prayer requests are they can get to many different places, but they always get to Brother Jamie and I and our prayer team. So please uh, fill out those cards if you have a prayer request for us. If we would this morning, let's prepare for our, our prayer. Let's do so in song as we get ready to pray to our God. God, as we gather here to worship you, we give thanks. We give thanks and hope and love and peace and joy and an expectation of Christmas morning. Lord, grant us this time together. Calm our hearts. Give us a peace that's everlasting. Bless our bodies and our minds in this time. May we find a calmness here in this place. Help us to step away from the strain and the stress of holiday season. Help us to forget the traffic and the shopping. Remind us that you are our God and that you are here with us to be here for us as we are here to worship you. Lord, bless our church in this upcoming year. Bless each of us 
as we move forward in ministry of the, your church. Lord, we ask your comfort and your healing touch, your blessings on so many, on individuals, for congregations, for ourselves. Lord, we lift up Keith and Sharon and Esther and Liz and so many others, Lord. We lift them up to you, knowing that you hold them. Lord, we lift up those people who we have not listed. We lift up those we have forgotten. We lift up all the good intentions that we have, knowing that you remember them, even when we forget. Lord, we ask your blessings on us this morning. We ask your blessings on Brother Jamie as he preaches. We ask your blessings on our voice as we lift up your praises in song. We thank you, Lord, for those that lead us. Lord, we pray for those that follow. All these things we pray in your most holy and precious name. And as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's almost here, Christmas. And maybe you're excited about a Christmas gift, or, or maybe this year you're just happy with what you already have. But there was once a little boy, his name was Mike, and Mike was excited about Christmas. And that year for Christmas, his Uncle Frank, who did not live with him, gave him a set of drums. And the next time that Mike saw his Uncle Frank, he was so excited to tell Uncle Frank, thanks for the gift of the drums, that... The drums were absolutely the best Christmas gift he had ever been given. And Uncle Frank said, well, that's wonderful. So are you learning how to play the drums? Have you gotten very good yet? And Mike said, oh, no, I don't know how to play the drums. He said, Mama gives me a dollar not to play them in the day, and my father gives me $5 a week not to play them at night. And he said, it's the really the very best Christmas present you could ever give me. <laughs> it was the gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> well, this past Tuesday night, um, we as a church staff gathered to celebrate Christmas together. And the, your church staff, there were 38 of us together, you know, and all. They gave me one of the best Christmas gifts a, a group of people have ever given me. They gave me a new set of tennis shoes. Now, you really can't see these tennis shoes, but you know what? They are Ed Hardy tennis shoes, which that means they're of a much younger generation than me. Um, they have tattoo printed material on the side. There's a woman's head with all kinds of foliage. So I, I never had a tattoo, so now I'm tattooed. Um, they have silver accents, and they don't have shoelaces, but they have a lovely silver chain on the side. And best of all, they're size 13, and I wear a 10 and a half. So my question to you this morning is, who will pay me to wear them? And who will pay me to take them off? So far, I've made a, I've made a quarter this morning. <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting for Christmas, but I wasn't expecting these at all. <laughs> but they were a gift, and they were given in love, and really they gave me a gift certificate to buy a more serious and suitable pair of shoes. But there in this Christmas season, we've been talking about gifts. We've talked about the gift of expectation, the gift of joy, the gift of hope. And we've talked about the gift of peace. And there's another gift of Christmas that we haven't talked about that we're going to talk about today. And that is the gift of peace. The 
the gift of peace. The peace that is found in Jesus Christ. So this morning we're reading in Luke's gospel in the second chapter. We're reading together verses 8 through 14. We're also going to read in Ephesians in the second chapter. And we'll read together there in verses 17 and 18 if you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible or in your Bible that you've brought from home. And I'll be reading out the NIV translation. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel and praising God and said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And then in Ephesians, in the second chapter, verse 17 and 18, we read, And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him, We both have access to the Father by the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In verse 14, we read the words that were heralded by the heavenly hosts. They said, peace, glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace to those on whom His favor rests. Peace. But then we hear that word peace and And oftentimes we put a question mark behind it. Peace, right? You know, we we are here in the shadow of a tragedy that happened a little more than a week ago. Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. When we horrified watched and heard the news reports. That 26 and 7 year old children, students, had been murdered. That six educators had been shot. That a mother while she was sleeping her life was taken. And then a very troubled young man had taken his own life. And so when we hear of tragic situations like that, we wonder where is peace? Where is peace in a culture that is is devastated and, and hurt and torn apart by anger and hate? In prejudice, in greed, in selfishness, and the misguided, where is peace? Well, for us, as believers in Jesus Christ, we discover through our relationship with our Lord that our peace is in Christ, that our peace is in Him. That God sent His Son to be peace in a culture that struggles to have peace the purity, and to know the purity of peace in our lives. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 53, in verse 5, we read the words that the prophet Isaiah prophesied when he said, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds... We are healed. And together in Ephesians, in the second chapter, verse 17, we read that He came and He preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Peace is available to us. Even in a troubled world and in a a difficult society, peace is available to us. And that peace is available to us through a baby. That was born in a a borrowed manger in Bethlehem stable. Peace is available to us in the one that human parents were told to name. Peace is available to us in the one we call Jesus Christ. And see, we can't find our peace in anyone else or anywhere else. As hard as we may search or as as may diligent as we may try. Because our peace comes through faith in Jesus Christ. 
And He is the solution to our quest for peace. He always has been. And He always will be because He is the one who came to bring to us peace. He is the one who came so that we may have peace with God. May find peace within ourselves. And may experience peace with others. You know, the birth of Jesus Christ brought to us all the opportunity of peace. All of us. And it's through His birth that no longer do we have to wonder how to have access to God. Or, or how can we find peace with God? Or how can we experience the, the peace that God wants to give us? Because it's through Jesus Christ that we have access to God. And in turn, we have the opportunity to experience peace. God loves us so much. God loves you so much. That He wants you to have. He wants you to receive the gift of peace. And so He sent His Son as the peace bearer. As the Prince of Peace. But you know what? Just like any gift has to be received, so does the gift of Christ. So that you and I may experience the gift of peace. We have to receive Christ into our lives. And when we receive Christ into our lives, we then experience the gift of peace. We experience the gift of God in our lives. Even though we still may have struggles, we still may have difficult moments or we may still face hard times. Even in our struggles, we can have peace. Because our peace is always in Him. And when we're at peace with God, when we're at peace with God through His Son, you know, we no longer have to search for that, that missing peace in our, our lives that we call peace. Because the, the hunt is over. The hunt for significance and, and inner peace, it's done. Because it is in faith in Christ that the faith of Christ fills that void in our life that we're searching for. And, and peace comes. You know, people seek to fill the void in their life with all kinds of things. Addiction. Habits. Obsessive behavior, aggression. Those are all attempts to find peace in the wrong way and in the wrong places. But when we find Jesus, when we experience His peace within ourselves, then His peace assures us of our own worth. His peace assures us of our own significance. And see, it is through God that you and I are worthy of His love. And it is through God that you and I are worthy to receive the gift of His peace in our lives. And it's through Christ, it is through Jesus Christ that God assures us of the forgiveness of our sins. It's through Him that He says, listen. There's nothing that you could ever do that is so wrong that you can be held back from me. See, it's through Christ that He assures us of our purpose in life. No matter what stage or age that we're at, as we occasionally may have times in which we struggle to know our purpose. You know, no longer do we have to run from ourselves or, or our past because we can find who we are through the heart of God. And we can handle anything that comes our way through the power of His presence where we experience peace in Him. You know, He came to give us the gift of peace so that we have, are at peace with God. So that we're at peace with ourselves, but also so that we are at peace with other people. It was through the birth of Jesus Christ that God gives us the gift and the ability to be at peace with each other. You know, and our peace doesn't rely on, on other people. Our peace doesn't rely on outer circumstances. It comes 
by following the teachings of Jesus Christ that we find in the Gospels, that we find in the New Testament. Because as you and I began to know and experience Jesus in our life and know Him, we discover through reading His Word that He offers a lot of wisdom to us about relationship with other people and, and how we're to, to relate to other people. He teaches us, He says, love your enemies. Pray for those who would harm you. Go the extra mile for people. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those who oppress you. See, when you and I receive the gift of a proactive peace, that sends us forth in the purity of peace into a hurting world and into hostile environments and and gives us the ability to face difficult people. You know, we're... None of us are ever guaranteed that we will always be loved or, or that we'll always be liked by other people. But what can we know? What we are guaranteed is that God will give to us His love. He will never withhold His love from us. And that in His love, we can experience peace. It is given to us as an amazing, valuable gift. And one of the very significant gifts of Christmas is the opportunity to experience peace in Christ as Savior and Lord. Because our hearts, our very nature hungers for peace. And our peace is in Christ. When Jesus was preparing His disciples that one day He would not always be with them, that one day He would leave them. And they were troubled over this word. He told them in John's gospel in the 14th chapter, in verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, but I give it to you. The gift of peace. You and I cannot come to know Christ without discovering that He has peace for us. Matthew Henry, a biblical scholar of a generation ago, he wrote, when Christ died, he left a will in which he gave our sins to the Father. He gave his body to Joseph of Arimathea. He gave his clothes to the soldiers. He gave his mother to Mary. But to us, to us, to you, and to me, he gave the gift of peace. Because He is our peace. And in Him we, and in His peace we find the ability to endure, to wait, to be patient, to survive, to soar, to experience victory. God loves you that much. He loves us all that much that He does not want us to live in a troubled environment, culture, or world. He wants us to know peace. And our peace is in His Son, Jesus Christ, who is truly the very best Christmas present that you and I have ever received or will ever receive. Lord, we thank you today for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And for the gift of peace that is made available to us through your Son. Lord, help us to be at peace with you. To, be, to discover and be at peace within ourselves. And to be in peace with each other. Through the gift of your Son. And through the help of your Holy Spirit. It's in the name of the Prince of Peace that we offer our prayer to you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This morning our closing hymn is What Child Is This? It's hymn number 219. It's our song of invitation and I offer to you this invitation and that is if you'd like to become part of this church family at 
First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista, we'd love to receive you here. You're invited to come on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of your life. You're invited to come on transfer of your membership from another church family to this church family. If you'd like to be in a time of prayer, the altar is here for you to be in a time of personal prayer. Or if you would like to be prayed with by one of the pastors, we are here. We invite you to come as you feel led, as we stand and sing together. What child is this? Well, thank you for being here with us this morning. We pray that you will have a most wonderful Christmas and that you will experience all the gifts that the Christ child offers to us. We're glad that you're here. And we pray for you that you walk in the knowledge that our God is the God who's faithful. He's faithful in our past. He's faithful in this present moment. And he's faithful for our future. Remember, don't just come to church, but be the church. And I'm going to take a a personal moment just to introduce you to my parents back there. They are back there. I really do have parents. And please tell them I say nice things about them, okay? Whether it's true or not, tell them that, all right? <laughs> but we're glad that you're here. We pray for you and wish you a very Merry Christmas.